Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included, where we're talking about gases and how to use them. There are many gases in Oxygen Not Included, and almost all of the materials in the game can become gases if made hot enough. Gases are most clearly seen in the materials overlay, accessed by pressing F4 and selecting the gas filter. They float in packets which have masses measured in grams or kilograms, and there can only be one type of gas per tile. Gases pass through pneumatic doors, but are blocked by manual and mechanised airlocks when closed. Mechanised airlocks can be controlled with automation, and open more quickly when powered. They can also be used without power, but will operate more slowly. Gas packets will move around in a somewhat random way, and exchange mass with the tiles next to them if they are the same gas. If they are next to a tile of a different gas, then they may swap places. An important point to remember is that each gas has an inherent density value which determines how gas packets interact vertically. Because of this, gases form horizontal layers as lighter gases will flow to the top and heavier gases sink. This is independent of the mass of each gas present, but this will influence the thickness of each layer. As you can see, I've put the six most common gases in a box, and they will sit calmly as they are ordered by density. Hydrogen is the lightest at the top, with oxygen and polluted oxygen below. Note that these two have exactly the same density and have a tendency to form their own mixed layers. Natural gas sits below this and then chlorine. Carbon dioxide is the heaviest of the gases and sinks to the bottom. To show the settling, I have another box here with the gases upside down and separated by doors. Opening the doors lets the gases mix and by super accelerating time you can see them forming the same layers. Liquids and solids will take priority over gases, and when this occurs, the weight of the gas will be distributed to the surrounding tiles if possible. In this example, there are three tiles of oxygen in a small box, each of two kilograms. When I flip the switch, a small packet of water will enter the box, which displaces the oxygen at the bottom. As you can see, this mass is split evenly to the other two tiles, so each is now three kilograms, and the total is still six. If we change the setup slightly, we can do a similar experiment, but with a tile of hydrogen and a tile of oxygen. When the switch is flipped, the water will still take the place of the oxygen, but the hydrogen already occupies the top tile. Therefore, the oxygen is deleted. Because liquids block gas flow, they can be used to form liquid locks, which typically use water troughs to create perfect gas seals. I will discuss this in their own tutorial bite. There are two types of gas pump, a regular one and a mini one. The regular gas pumps can move 500 grams a second, and the mini pump moves 50 grams a second. Each pipe segment can take up to 1 kilogram a second of gas, which will be filled by two regular gas pumps. For the final section of the video, I'm going to go to more detail on the six most common gases and discuss their sources and uses. Hydrogen is the pink gas and is produced by hydrogen vents and electrolyzers. In a spaced out DLC, plug slugs are also a source of hydrogen. Note that hydrogen is unbreathable, and like all unbreathable gases, juice will develop eye irritations when moving through it, hindering athletics. They must hold their breath in these areas, and will eventually suffocate if they cannot reach oxygen before their breath runs out. Hydrogen has a few uses, and is most commonly consumed in the hydrogen generator for power. Trecos need a hydrogen atmosphere to regrow their coats when sheared, and it can also be used to power an anti-entropy thermonullifier, which cools down its surroundings. It can be liquefied when supercooled to minus 255 degrees, making liquid hydrogen the most powerful rocket fuel in the game. Oxygen is of course vital to the duplicate's survival, and they need a constant supply to breathe. It can be produced in a variety of ways, and typical early game methods include oxygen diffusers or oxyphones. In the mid to late game, electrolyzers are almost always the main source of oxygen, and I will cover how to effectively use these in another tutorial bite. The main uses for oxygen are obviously breathing, and this includes being used for oxygen masks or suits. Enclosed telescopes require a supply of oxygen to function, and it has two uses as an oxidizer with rocket fuel. The solid oxidizer Oxalite is made in the Oxalite refinery, and the more powerful liquid oxygen can be produced by supercooling it down to minus 186 degrees Celsius. Polluted oxygen is similar to oxygen and is breathable by dupes, although this will give them the yucky lungs debuff, making them cough and consume more oxygen cannot be used to supply suits, and also allows slime lung germs to thrive, 
and so should be treated with care for unprotected tubes. Polluted oxygen is primarily created through the off-gassing process, which is when liquids or solids lose a small amount of mass to form a gas. This only happens when there is less than 1.8 kilos per tile of mass on the tile where the gas would form. Polluted dirt, polluted mud and slime all create polluted oxygen, as does polluted water. Morbs also produce a small amount, and there are two types of polluted oxygen vents in the game. Deodorizers convert polluted oxygen into regular oxygen and produce clay in the process. Natural gas is the orange one and is primarily used as a fuel source in natural gas generators. The gas range is the only other building to consume natural gas. It is produced as a byproduct of oil refineries, oil wells and fertilizer synthesizers, as well as being output from natural gas vents. Flatulent tubes will fart out small amounts of natural gas and gas emus also create it when fed gas grass. Natural gas is produced in large quantities as the output from a sour gas boiler, which is an advanced build that I will explain in depth in a separate tutorial bite. Chlorine is green and is useful in killing germs, and is therefore excellent for food storage or removing germs from liquids. A chlorine atmosphere is required to grow balm lilies and dash of salt vines, and it can be consumed by puff princesses and squeaky puffs to make bleach stone. Chlorine vents are the main source of chlorine in the game. The last gas is carbon dioxide, which is black. Juice breathe out small amounts continuously, and many industrial machines produce it as a waste product. These include the polymer press, gas range, and ethanol distiller, as well as multiple generators, including the coal, natural gas, petroleum generators, as well as the wood burner. There are two types of geyser that produce carbon dioxide in either gaseous or liquid form. Dust caps need a carbon dioxide environment to grow in, and slickers consume it in large quantities. In a spaced out DLC, it can also be used to power the carbon dioxide rocket. So having gone through these, this concludes the introduction to gases and how to use them in oxygen not included. I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.